Hey everybody, I just want to give a quick shout out to Cinema Recalls. So this past week on August 4th, they released their latest episode of their podcast. I was a guest on the show with The Vern, and we talked about a movie called Frankenhooker from 1990. It was a lot of fun. Um, if you like our show and you like myself or Clark, please check out this episode from Cinema Recall. You can find them on Anchor FM. You can also find them on Spotify and all your other favorite podcast locations. Um, but it's really important that we help support each other. So like I said, if you like our show, um, I am a guest on the show and Cinema Recall is a lot of fun. They're the ones that have done the Night of the Living Dead audio drama. So if you like that movie, maybe check that out as well. It's a two-parter and it, it features different voices from the community, people that we know um, and that we hang out with a lot on Twitter who are part of the mutant fam and the horror fam. So if you like it, check it out, let them know, and uh, enjoy this week's episode. Ladies and gentlemen, come one, come all, to the greatest show on earth. Nay, I say the universe. Two guys and some horror. Oh, that's right, it's us. Myself, Clark, joined by my eternal bromance, Mr. Curtis Miller. How are you doing today, Curtis? I'm doing good, thanks, dude, for that amazing introduction. Oh, most welcome, my friend. Now, let's talk about the movie we watched today. Let's, it, uh, it was a good one. It was, it was really good. So it's called Ringu. Ringu. R-I-N-G-U. And it, believe it or not, is the movie The Ring, if you've heard of that. Which was like, what was it, 2002 horror movie? Uh, everybody was talking about it. It was one of those few PG-13 horror movies that girls would watch and they go, oh, it's so scary. And it's, so it's not really offensive scary. It's more psychologically scary. There's, there's no gore, it's just people dying. And it turns out, that movie is a ripoff of Ringu, which was made in January 13, 31st, or it was re released January 31st in 1998. Now, Curtis, this film has a budget of $1.2 million, estimated. But you know what the worldwide gross is? No, hit me with it. 59000 and one dollar what what sad trombone. american dollars so i don't i don't know like i don't know if japan or wherever this was theatrically released like i don't know i don't know if they, they collected the numbers the way we do here in the united states i don't know how that works but that, that doesn't make sense to me because this movie is is pretty well known so here's here's what usually happens with a film like this a lot of times um right the movie gets released in its country of origin it is not loved at all right like usually there's a bit of pushback um and what happens is either the 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 critics or like in the us the the mpaa board gives it really high like oh this is this is worse than an x rating you got your or an r rating you got to dumb it down that kind of a thing and then it gets right. shunned and not shown in a lot of theaters. But, I mean, honestly, I don't know the history too much behind Ringu other other than some of the stuff that you and I talked about. We'll get to that in a little bit. So I'm not really sure what happened there on the, on the gross. To me, I've always heard that this is the Ring film you want to see of all Ring films. You don't want to watch yeah. the remake. You want to watch this one. Yeah, well, okay, so the original Ring grossed like $130 million about. Like, I'm just throwing a ballpark figure out there. It was like $129. But, and they had like a budget of $48 million, which is a lot more than this Japanese studio had. So I, I really don't believe this movie failed in Japan. 
I don't believe that because this this character, this girl in the well, has been reused in several Japanese. Like you know me, I'm I'm a Japanophile in terms of like watching their cultural stuff. Like I watch their show, TV shows, I watch anime, I read manga. Like this stuff is just as nerdy as much of a, an introverted as I am. Like this is just surprising to me to see fifty nine thousand. So I don't believe yeah. that. I think we just don't have all the information. I think that's just like from maybe a global release that they started gathering information for. I hope so, because the people that worked on this, um, actors, directors, producers, the folks who wrote the the screenplay, even even the rights for the novel are worth, you know, in my opinion, more Dude. than fifty grand. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know this was written based off of a book either. That's one thing to kind of talk about. There's a book called Ringu, which I don't know if you want to read that after watching this film. I don't think this movie is really good. It's it's definitely worth watching. I think you and I both have that share that opinion. Yeah, definitely. I like, mean, I, lo I loved so, this movie. I thought it was great in all aspects. This is a scary movie. This is like a, an introductory scary movie. If I was going to say, okay, so like there's Get Out, there's Ringu. If you want to watch something that's relatively safe on your stomach and if you just want to like fill some sort of fear, they do a great job of setting the atmosphere in this film. Yeah. I I, I mean, I have no arguments. So like this is yeah. going to be a very easy, I think, episode for people to listen to. Um, you know, we're just probably going to end up talking about some of the things that we liked, obviously. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say there's only one thing I didn't like about the movie. And even that is such a minuscule thing that it doesn't really, I don't know, to me, it's it's not a problem at all. It's not really a flaw. It was just more of like, I wouldn't have done them as often. Um, and they didn't even do them that often. But it's the jump scares, the little little jump scares, the cuts that they do real quick. Um, you know, because it's 2020. A lot of times you watch a movie, especially a horror movie, and the expectation is that if it's filled with jump scares, it's probably not a good movie. They don't do it like that. It's just... In Ringu, my opinion is that the jump square, jump scares are used kind of um, in, in a cheesy way. Like they jump and then it's like the face cuts to gray and black and white or whatever. And they use yeah. loud music to really enforce the jump scare versus just the you pan over and oh my god something's there. And and uh, I don't know. I would have I would have liked to see those kills in a different manner than the the jump scare. That's all. That'd be my it wasn't only... really a jump scare, but I have comments on that too. You know, you know me. I have comments on everything on this film. Things that I notice that other people don't really kind of notice until uh, if you inspect it a little bit closer. But sorry, I didn't mean to sound like a dick there. But <laughs> you know me. I felt like those those kind of fading into black and white with the Polaroid look was cheesy. But I understand the artistic direction behind it. They were trying to make it look like some weird photograph connection to, because you know, because like in, in the film when it got close to their the time where the killer got them, their photographs would become distorted. That's true. I, I like that. I like that uh, connection. Putting those two together. Well, it's it's just something I could. No, it's it, I don't I don't know if they're actually connected or not. But if that was the artistic direction, it would make sense to me. Sure, I'll go with that movie was about like films and cameras and if they want to reinforce that idea in your mind okay that kind of makes sense but we're not going to know that as the audience unless they kind of showcase that a little bit better yeah they'd have to push a little bit more information at you to really i guess let you understand that that's that's where they're heading with it I doubt it. Yeah, I think I'm wrong. <laughs> I mean, I like the idea. What I'm saying is I like your idea of that connection because at least it gives me a little bit more of a reason for that specific shot. Um, otherwise, I feel like yeah. it is just a jump scare. So I like the idea that it's more than a jump scare, I guess, is what I'm saying. I, I like, like going, that. yeah, I can make this work if it's this. So I, I, I agree with you, but I don't, I don't know. If they wanted to make it a jump scare, they should have just had them turn around and do the whole, you know, 1940s scream. Instead, they just... No scream. Polaroid, Polaroid picture, kind of backing out, showing a face of horror, like a still frame in black and white. It's a cool transition, but you're right; it doesn't really scare you. It just makes you go, "Huh? I guess he died." <laughs> huh? I don't know this person. But anyhow, let's kind of get into the movie a little bit better. 
um, <clears throat> or get into the movie itself. I think, like you said, the actors are pretty great. Uh, who Who's your favorite character in this film, first of all? Uh, I really liked... Uh... I'm gonna. I'm not even gonna attempt names. You can. You can do the names if you remember them. Um, but the son. I really like the son. Yeah, dude. I thought he was pretty good. He was like a robot, though. Yeah. I I think he kept. Uh, so in this movie, he he had much more of that man. Something's wrong with that kid feel than yes. the American remake, where the kid was just annoying. Child actors are so annoying in American film and. I think this Japanese film. Well, they try to make them job. all relatable. Yes, and and they didn't this do that. This kid was here. just yeah. like a robot. I don't I don't know if this is how kids how kids are behaved in Japan, but no, for me it was like this kid's creeping me out. Dude, when those two you stopped know, in the rain and they had their umbrellas out, it was his. Oh yeah, that's his father, right? And you don't know that at the time when you're watching the movie, but that's his dad. And they just stop under their umbrellas pouring rain and they just look at each other for a second not a single word is uttered between the two and he just walks around his dad i'm glad you said that because i brought that up to you while we were watching that movie i'm like that's his dad yeah so (laughs) yeah i mean just so you have context there before you watch the film if you didn't know that the scene would just be like the kid walks around a weird weird old guy Mm -hmm. but in the case of this no this kid sees his dad he's just like uh just walks walks away from him well, even better, I, which, I mean, the I, weird the weird old guy goes yeah. to his mom's house you know what i mean and and that's when they're they're discussing the tape for the first time i believe or whatever and like yeah yeah, yeah. oh man to connect like you don't put it well you don't yeah you don't really know except for hints kind of thrown at you right until he says i wish we never had a kid together that's when you really i mean talk about drama and feeling and emotion like that scene alone when they're oh, when they're in the it's it's an inn right it's it's an inn, and they're staying the night because they're investigating and they're trying to figure out more about the the origin of the tape. We'll just because I don't want to go too deep. We're getting real. I'm yeah. pushing you all so, over the place. I'm sorry. But, I want to tell you like the, my favorite character is uh, yes. Ryuji okay, Takayama. Perfect. Yep. And that is the dad's character. Uh, the actor is Hiroyuki Sanada. Sanada. Uh, but I he's dude. He's been in a lot of shit and he's like way down the list on imdb for actors who were in this film and he's probably my favorite character yeah it he's shocked got me. that gritty detective look and he's he's kind of like he's had it with life it, he's the guy that kind of faced life and he's just like my life my life was really rough and now i'm just gonna be depressed all the time personality and he does that he lands that character perfectly honestly but, great looking dude like a handsome man, like real handsome, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, acts his ass off. And I, I mean, like I said, I this is just going to be a, a huge, like, I don't know, happy party this episode. So so if you're not into that, I'm sorry. But like, whatever, dude, don't I apologize for that. I shit. can't We're think of any flaws. This is a great People movie. are listening to this. And if they're enjoying it, man, they're enjoying it. I want you to enjoy your time here, too. Yeah. So we I initially you. was going to pick him as as. <laughs> as the character of my favorite mm-hmm. character. And then I kind of started seeing more of Yochi and how his how subtle, creepy he was. Yeah. And his subtle pieces throughout the film. And he's a latchkey kid. I can relate to that. He, he, I bet you they got the plot for the sixth sense from, <laughs> or they probably ripped it from the sixth sense with this movie, actually 1999, uh, six to, to 98. Cause yeah, this kid sees dead people. Yeah, he does. Uh, his parents are dead, though, so there's no weird plot twist like that in this film. All yeah. right, no, there is a plot twist, there. but we won't spoil that. It's if you've seen the ring, you already know what it is, because uh, the ring is almost a frame by frame copy of this film. But yeah, no, like he was in Westworld. He was Musashi in Westworld. Mm-hmm. This guy, uh, he's been in a lot of stuff. He was in like, the Avengers. Yeah, he's a well-worked actor. And he's not done, because we looked at his, his production notes for what he's got coming up. He's going to be in the new Mortal Kombat. I believe he's going to be Scorpion. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. His his, Yeah, he, he's a great actor. He's phenomenal. He's, um, he's got the look, and he's got the, the swagger to pull off, you know, like, uh, he, he's, I don't know, he, he's kind of like Hugh Jackman in a, in a way of his, his gruffness. He could pull off a character, any character Hugh Jackman could pull off, he could, I would say. I like that. I like that idea. In terms of the, the, 
what's the word presence he brings in to any film i feel like that could fulfill his role and since hugh jackman's getting a little old maybe maybe consider someone else maybe uh, <clears throat> hey, maybe maybe nobody's listening to me anyhow we're gonna go into the film now stop getting distracted this movie is it's kind of a like a horror mystery film there's kind of a scooby-doo mystery on top of this this video that you know there's this there's this tape that someone taped over from like midnight television in this very remote town where this girl i believe passed away and curtis correct me if i'm wrong in any of this okay um you take really good best. notes because <laughs> i'm well known to be wrong uh especially when it comes to movie details but i really liked the i think the start showcased us those two girls who are friends mm-hmm. and that, that kill scene with that weird panoramic that you don't like and like they're talking about this they're introducing you to the the concept of the film is that they watched this this video and then they received a phone call with this weird sound and said like one week you have one week left to live can i break down the and, scene real quick for the listeners because this is yes. probably one of the best opens to a movie i've seen in a long time and i know it's from 98 so that sounds kind of weird but all right so you got masami and tomoko and yeah the, so so they're two friends they're just hanging out one friend's telling the other friend about this infamous uh vhs tape that if you watch it seven days later you're dead the the thing that i don't get uh, with the friend though is that she's laughing after telling this gruesome story like she's just she thinks it's a big joke right she thinks it's funny um but anyways the friend then mentions that her and a bunch of other kids went to this cabin and got away and they watched this infamous tape uh seven days prior to that night and then the phone rings and like that phone ring is annoying you and i watched this together this part specifically last night and like that that ring, I was like, whose phone is going off right now on chat? Like that's so obnoxious. It was the movie. Um, but it definitely helps build like that suspense. And that ended up just being her mom telling her that that she'd be home late because the baseball game ran extra innings or whatever. And then the TV yeah. comes on. And then Okay, well let's talk about yeah. the emotions. Okay. Like that they're showing throughout the scene. Cause I feel like yeah. this movie does emotions in a way American movies don't. Like we we tend to showcase our emotions with what we're saying and what we're doing. We don't really like physically expressing the emotion isn't something I see a whole lot of in American productions, especially anything like at this level of horror in the United States. Like they do fantastically. Like these two girls are friends, right? Mm-hmm. And they're close friends. You know they care about each other. You know they 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 like one another. It's just. I don't know, in Japan, like, friends seem a little bit closer in, in terms of, like, able to, like, touch. I mean, I they're, know, like, here they're, it's they're basically completely like different. You're, you're, you're talking about when they're play fighting or, like, wrestling and giggling. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like, one they're, girl like, wrestling the other play girl. fighting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not trying to say it, put it in any other contextual way other than that they, they have a really deep friendship and yeah. they, you can tell that they care about one another. You can feel it through their acting and their physical yes. movement and their conversation. Like, yes. So, so remember, this is a this is in Japanese. So I'm watching subtitles and you and I talked about this a little bit prior to the show as well as like I miss facial cues a lot because I am reading the subtitles so tentatively. Um, but like. I don't know. I I have to really focus in on the subtitles to make sure I understand the story and what's going on and what they're saying that I do miss facial cues. But one thing that you can tell is you can hear them laughing. You can hear them wrestling around, goofing around. Like she's like, tell me what you did with the boy. Tell me what you did with the boy. Like that kind of a thing. Like they're just really good friends and you you can feel that through it like really, really well. I really, I 100% agree. Uh, It's the, the whole ability to convey something that anyone can read just by seeing it and in your actions and just because i don't speak the language and i don't understand what they're saying verbally uh if i did not have subtitles on from this movie i could say oh these girls are friends Mm -hmm. because they're laughing with the way that they're fighting and then through this saying like once it gets to the point where the killer comes in and and kills the girl it pans out like we're introduced to okay something is killing these girls it goes directly to the main character after that who is the reporter the gumshoe you would say 
uh, what it was her name, Nana, uh, Reiko? Reiko Asakawa. Yeah. Well, Reiko just, yeah, she, she's like, all right, she's finding out from these teenagers about this r urban legend, specifically about people dying from watching the video, and she does an interview with these girls, which Wait, you're kinda... not gonna you're not gonna break down your five dollar word you just dropped there, your gumshoe. Gumshoe, okay. So yeah, yeah. gumshoe is basically a like a private detective who's like she's researching or digging and finding out the the secrets between this uh, this conspiracy, and she's digging in deeper and she's finding more and more and more uh, throughout the process of this film until she thinks she finds the solution that will stop the killings, um, which she attempts, which. I don't, I don't know, man. I think they did. They did a great job with that. <laughs> Knowing her job is super helpful in understanding her motives in this movie though. So that's why I'm glad yeah. that you define that word because personally, I, I don't know what that word means. I knew that she was like a, a detective of sorts for, I assume journalism only. Yeah, She's a journalist. She's but, not, but she's so not, much but, uh, more. Uh, yeah. You know that I mean that word gives it such more of a of a meaning. There's so like she's she's all about finding the source of truth through through the story, whether it's good or bad. Um, she's and a she'll journalist. Stop at she's nothing. finding. Yeah. She's yeah. making the story by finding it. Yeah. And there's a story and so many things, and she just knows her job and she knows how to to make money off of it. Where to, to the point where she's relatively successful. You know, yeah, as she a looks female like reporter she runs, in Japan, she, she looks like she runs the place. Oh, dude, and especially in the 1990s in Japan, I don't know, like, great, great work, great acting, period. We're introduced to a weird kid at some point, and he just, he's like all dressed and ready for this funeral, funeral or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And she's the one laying, and he's like, yeah, I got your outfit ready for you. It's right there, and it's all hung up, neatly pressed. I bet you that kid pressed her her clothes for her because he's such a weird mama's boy. Well, he didn't have and, to press his pants, so that was something that saved him time. He could just do her dress instead. Sure, that that's that's the answer. <laughs> this kid just creeps me out the whole time. The outfit. Walks I past mean, it. <laughs> so yeah. we were watching it last night, and and shout out to Raptor. He had a pretty funny comment when we were watching. He's like, "Where's the kid's pants?" Because the outfit is real high <laughs> socks, wearing shorts. real short shorts, and and a very yeah, nice but that's top. Really but common. that's that's the style there. Yeah. It's really common for little kids to wear stuff like that because it's I mean, cute, and the parents actually, think yeah. it's cute. My, so my, that's the uniform to my be two cute. month old has very short shorts on usually too. Yeah, I agree. I don't know, whatever, whatever man. It's it's, it's adorbs. Not, that's the whole point. Like people just want to see cute things that make them happy. So like, why not have these kids with these short shorts that look really dorky? Because we think dorky things are cute. But if a man dresses like that, looking like me, you'd think all right. A little Comedy. worried about his family. Comedy hour has begun. Pretty much. So like that's how you get Andre. introduced. That's how you get introduced yeah. to her son. Oh, we man. go to the funeral. We do all this stuff. Yeah. That, I don't know. Is, is there? Is there? If there's anything you want to kind of talk about nah, in terms funeral, of scenes, until we meet, like, bleh. until she watches the video, I don't feel like anything is as important as, yeah. So no, I think one up thing till now, up till she watches the video, what do you think? I, I think it's it's definitely slower paced, I guess, in the beginning. It's not like super slow, but there there is this long drawn out um you know, world building, I guess, character building even of the mom, the son, um and what the mom is getting wrapped into, right? So it's kind of that beginning yeah. of of her understanding that something big is going on here, especially when her son, you know, starts going upstairs in this house and he's going into the girl's room. And I mean, he's man, just being that's, weird. yeah, he's, he's just got some, I thought he, I thought he had imaginary friend. I thought they're going to do the imaginary friend thing, but it turns out to be a dead person. Like that's what I was expecting. As soon as he started doing that weird stuff. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, oh, by it's, the way, it's actually Tomoko, right? Yeah. 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 It's uh, we're going to enter in spoilers spoilers territory for the rest of this so not mm. that we're not spoiling anyways <laughs> be per, but be anything prepared. past this is going to ruin this movie for you if you haven't seen it just just watch it if you've seen the original ring like i've said you've already seen it so 
Yeah, I mean, Anyhow, almost, almost shot for shot. Yeah, you've already seen yeah. it. <clears throat> yeah, but this one's acted better. Anyhow, Much better. not saying Naomi Watts didn't do a good job. I just feel I like this one more. Uh, yeah, so we meet meet the we meet her husband. Like she watches the video, and it, it's creepy. You know, it has that weird scraping violin noise to reinforce this is creepy. But he doesn't get the and... phone call. What? The husband. He doesn't get the phone call. He doesn't get the phone call. No. How do we know? Maybe it happened off screen. But he said, sorry, he says he never got a call. Like he tells her oh, yeah. even that he never got a call. And I don't, I maybe, don't understand that part of the rule. You know what I mean? I just, I don't understand that part of the rule, but it definitely feels kind of weird that they would leave that open-ended without really giving us an answer. He could have been lying because you look at his face when he's saying that. Sure. He might be just trying to calm he down. He seems very conflicted. No, because every, every scene after that, look at the way he's kind of acting. It looks like he's holding something back. So I think he lied to her. I just don't think they explained that he lied to her. Yeah. I feel like him as an actor, he was like, my character is lying and I should be acting this way. So And maybe, maybe that's not true. Maybe he got the call later but, back at his house instead yeah, of when he was I, there with her. Yeah. I like the explanation of him lying. It might, it's probably not true, but that's I, my head cannon, and that's what I'm sticking with. I mean, it makes yeah, it can make sense <laughs> for sure. It could be. It could your be. Wife's, it could not be. Out of protecting your wife's mental state, do you want her to yeah. think that you're going to die in seven days, or would you rather her think she's not going to die in seven days? You know, because you didn't get the call. I don't know. It's interesting, that's for sure. So, well, we know he's. He's kind of a scumbag esque character that she's kind of disappointed in, like with the way she lets him in the door. Like you could, I get the feeling like there was some sort of chemistry between the two of that two of them at one point, mm -hmm. and he's just kind of like bitter towards her and vice versa. Well, I mean, when they go back to his place later on, I think you kind of understand more why. I mean, he's got. Well, a she's student. like, take my picture, right? <laughs> yeah, she's like, take my picture, and he's about to take her picture, and she's all shy about it. She's like, no, don't. Uh, I'm so, I'm so shy. That's, act. that's weird. Yeah, I, I mean, I wonder if she's, he's like, let me take your picture. Just face me. Like, I wonder Jesus. if she's worried about how how it's gonna turn out because she knows what's gonna happen with the photo. It's just you know, it's this relationship where they keep just making the same mistakes over and over again. At least that's that's the perspective I have. Yeah, where I was going with the his his house stuff or his his place is he has his you know he's there with his ex-wife um, yeah and they're they're still working on trying to figure out the origins of the the ringu tape and then his student comes in and you can tell that his student because he's a professor is more than just a teacher student relationship and i think that also might be something that stemmed you know kind of the problem between him and her maybe i don't know that's kind of he's an attractive dude, dude. and yeah. he's a and yeah. he's a, he's in a position of power so i don't know man probably maybe he, he he also like left his kid from my understanding like he wasn't there and involved in his kid's life his kid didn't really want to spend any time with him yeah we find out he didn't really want a kid you know what i mean i mean in in the later yeah. on in the end he's like we shouldn't have even had a kid and then, you know, he's like, I, well, he said, I wish we never had a kid together. Yeah. So, I mean, I you can tell he was not a fan. I think it's less a about a kid. And he's like more about like never having a relationship with this girl, which like, is I so heartbreaking for her thing. I don't think he meant it as I wish we never had a kid. I think he meant it as with you specifically. I don't think he meant it at all. I think he was stressed out in the moment. I, you know what? You're probably right. He loves her. He really loves her. He might really love her. And, All right, so uh, enough, of, end, that. He, enough he of that. He pays the price and is dead. And spoilers, my favorite character dies. I ruined the movie. Don't watch it. Uh, <laughs> Be kind. Rewind. Um, yeah, so, well, they're, they're tearing this video <laughs> apart. She tapes it. Like, she tapes it. I think she tapes it, right? Uh, no, she takes the tape the, from before. Huh? Get oh, right, right, right. She <laughs> finds the tape, and it was in the uh, cabin, the hotel. Four. <laughs> it was an unmarked video at a hotel. She takes it. It's hers. She takes it back to him. 
they look at it like frame by frame and they keep going back and she has she makes a copy and has him watch the copy like, so he can yeah, study and, it and all that yeah and they're trying to do their gum show work to find out the history behind this video and they're trying to resolve it so she makes a copy of the tape at one point mm-hmm. and she wakes up finds her kid watching it um and her and she's like what are you doing and she's like Tamako told me to. This is weird, small, creepy kid acting. I'm just like, okay, so the kid's going to die now. The creepy kid, and he's talking to the ghost. So in my mind, it's like, where are we going next? And his delivery is so good. It's just straight to the point, no emotion. Oh, yeah. Tomoko made me do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. Oh, I man. agree. Um, I, I also, like... So the sound did a really good job of building your ambience. Did you feel that throughout a lot of these scenes where, because, um, cause especially earlier on in the movie, there isn't a lot of talking. There's a lot of her running around and, and checking things, but you yeah. kind of like, if you follow her, you can feel like her emotions start to be getting heightened as the music amps up. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was interesting. No, like, it was good. They did a good job. I, I feel yeah, no, especially like the way they kind of look away from each other when they're about to fight. So I this is another thing I want to talk about with this film without it's not really connected to the plot, but throughout each scene, when there's some emotion that needs to be conveyed, they look in the distance, they look towards the camera in such a way that like they show some sort of physical pain or whatever they're they're dealing with subconsciously. It's more of a kind of a theater way of acting or of soap opera which i kind of t- we talked about earlier curtis mm-hmm. like you you didn't really see the soap opera in us because they're not and i'm not saying that such a way that they're really hamming it up but they're hamming it up enough to where you can t- kind of tell like yeah this person's really trying to showcase they're overacting a little bit they're trying to showcase emo- emotion at this scene so someone's talking to someone else and then they kind of look away a little bit face the distance as if they're they're in a pensive state or if they're angry at someone they look away and then they say something under their breath and that's kind of vocalized or the girl acting embarrassed when the guy's about to take her picture trying to showcase that she has still has interest in him and when he tells her that i wish i never dated you it breaks her heart uh and she starts crying like things yeah, she like can't even that. look at him yeah i mean she's so that is what destroyed. i mean destroyed yeah they overact a little bit in this film by adding in a little bit more emotion than you would probably ever see, which works. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely, so personally, I didn't feel like it was overacting. Like I said before, the subtitles kind of take away from me paying too much attention to faces and, and what they're doing. So I might have missed a good amount of that. Um, but at the end of the day, like, that scene, I remember watching that scene where he tells her, maybe we shouldn't have ever had a kid. And like, yeah. just the thought of like him and her and the anger, the emotions that they must be feeling right now because they're both on their final days. I think he's got three and she's got two left. And they're just, they're feeling like they're at a dead end and they've got nothing you know, left to live for, basically. He's like, maybe all three right. of us should just die. And she just throws herself over to the wall just to get away from as far as she can like i felt that like that was definitely to me it wasn't over like overly dramatic but like i don't know i just i really felt that i thought it was good i thought it was perfect um and i know you don't think it was bad so that's not what you're saying at all but i don't know that that scene yeah it is shook me i don't know (laughs) i don't know I don't know, man. I don't know anything. I you only know, know what my favorite color is, and it's pink. I know nothing. I know that I know nothing. Just All right, know. so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, this is a great film, just period. I'm, I'm, there's my gushing everywhere. This film, oh, it's great. It's so good. Oh, I love it. And uh, I feel like the ending was well met. They find the villain, that old dude who's mean to his wife who you want to be the villain is the villain. Yeah. 
and they bring the police. He goes to jail. Happy ending, or so we think. And well, that's my favorite scene in the movie, actually. The, yeah, the well scene where, where they're trying to like get the water out of the well with these yeah. sandcastle buckets as slowly as possible, <laughs> so they could find the body. And they're acting all dramatic over it. Yes, we need to get all this water out in such a short amount of time. When at the end of the day, if if they had just reached down and and felt around like she did, you could find the hair. That hair, oh, God, it creeps me out. Well, the body just kind of pokes out, and it's like, I'm a dead body. And then it just splits in half and turns into a skeleton, and I'm like, what kind of magic bullshit is this? Yeah, the hair splits, and then the skull cries the ooze. Oh, I don't know. I found that scene very gripping and disturbing at the same time, and you... And you really do think that this is the end. This is the, 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 the part of the movie where they've got it figured out, they solved the problem, and that everything is going to be okay from here on out. Yeah. I think they did the weird skeleton thing to kind of showcase, yeah, everything's taken care of now. You're all going to be good. And then just over. And, and then, then we get another we're thinking, 20 minutes. Oh, <laughs> we're thinking we're going to get a happy resolution here. We're going to see a good ending between the two of this, this you know, this couple that things just didn't work out for the man's going to come around. He's going to be like, I was wrong this whole time. You are the most attractive and most brilliant woman I've ever been with. I support you in everything. And I love our child, but no, she, uh, the guy just dies. Yeah. In a ceremonious way. Like, like he has a positive moment with, uh, the heroine Reiko and, yeah. Then he dies, and it's sad. It and is. then she's like, "What?" She's like crying to herself. She's like, "What did I do that you didn't do? What did I do that you didn't do? What did I do that you didn't do?" And she has an epiphany. She has an epiphany. She figures which it leads out. Leads to the resolution of because what she, did she could see her do. husband's dead body pointing at her purse. Yeah. That was, I mean, so that's, I think this is a big piece of the movie that I don't know if you, if you don't catch this, you're, you're going to probably miss some of the stuff that's going on. Like, so the husband, the wife had the, the son, all three of them can see spirits. Um, and they have a bit of ESP. Like when she right. touches certain objects, she can transport herself to the story or the memory, um, And so can the husband because he's the one who grabs the old man on the beach and actually takes them to the black and white trial where the wife who had ESP back in the day uh, was being tested in front of all those newspapers and journalists. Um, And they called her a blaspheme. And then that's when we find out about the daughter and she kills the guy and all that fun stuff. So like that, that scene alone is amazing. And I I don't think we want to unpack that whole thing. I'd rather the listeners check that out. If you kind of culturally culturally understand like some of the stuff in Japan, like ESP is is a pretty big major supernatural thing that they've always kind of believed in, in terms of like Shintoism. Uh, but it's not like it's one of those things where people are like, yeah, I believe in spirits, I believe in magic, I believe in this stuff. Uh, like very kind of heavily in, embedded in the Japanese folklore, and there the, we have these like scientists trying to understand this supernatural problem, creating the situations. The girl. So the girl ends up being murdered by her dad and everything's resolved, but it's not really. And she's just an anger spirit now. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of, if you remember dead by daylight, one of the characters, there's a spirit mm-hmm. and she is also this being like, that's connected to vengeance and just wailing around murdering people. Uh, kind of like that weird. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this evil spirits, magic folklore. It's cool. Good I like stuff. where you're. I like where you're going with this, but that all. Helps. Well, she, she, yeah. <laughs> it, it just she helps the cup. listeners understand in case they hadn't picked up on stuff like that throughout the film. Um, yeah. ESP is a huge part of this. The 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 evil spirit, the vengeful spirit, the. Um, the kid talks to the dead. Exactly, and and he gets it from his parents. I guess is where I was Lots alluding of visions. to. And there's more people like that, and the mom of the girl who's actually on the tape who's killing you. The mom had ESP and, and, you know, she had this child out of wedlock with the doctor 
and then he didn't want anyone to know about it he ended up losing his job and all that like there's a huge there's like a whole nother story arc just the girl (laughs) yeah just about that that doctor um and you know what? The, here, here's a little side name, note. And he's like, I don't want to know that name. Never yeah. say that name around me. And he just never, walks never around. Never heard of her. <laughs> well, he doesn't want to talk to the woman. He wants to talk to, uh, apparently, the dad. Or uh, Ryuji. Yeah. And he's smoking a cigarette talking to Ryuji just fine. Because, like, obviously this guy's got to be sexist. And they have to showcase that in this film. They definitely More reasons point to hate this guy. Oh, well, he he's the villain we want to be the villain. Yeah. They, we they want definitely to... fill his bags full of villainous things, for sure. They want us to feel for the the actual killer in the movie, which is the girl. Yeah, and Tomoko I do. Is the villain? I mean, I do. I feel bad we, for her. We sympathize for what happened to her, but she's bent on vengeance, and she just wants to kill more people. So make a copy of her, and she won't kill you. I guess. I guess we haven't seen the sequel though, because Ringu Two exists, yes. which I guess the Ring Part Two exists. So I'm assuming that if I watch Ringu Two, I've also watched the Ring Two. You know, from here Probably. on out, I'm going to guess yes. <laughs> I, I think you're right. This is the same situation between Rec and Rec. Rec and Quarantine. Um, oh, right, right. <laughs> quarantine. Which we did Rec on the show, and we did discuss that with Cesar about how... Check it out. It's a great basically episode. Basically, Quarantine completely ripped off uh, Rec, yeah. And that's exactly what the Hollywood box office did with Ringu. They made their own movie, um, and... And it had success here. That's the thing. It had success here. Well, they had to have, they had to have paid the source material, I believe, because they're like this would be more successful if it were in English here. Yeah. Yeah. I believe okay. that. I think they did it with Wreck and Quarantine as well, but I don't think it was blatant plagiarism. No. Uh, anyhow. So the point I w- or the other thing I want to bring up is in Ringu we get. Um, this is the initial story, but I mean, it's based on the novel that is actually in a novel series, right? So there's Spiral and Loop, which are two other stories that I, didn't know I, that. I wonder if they give us more background into Sadaku the, or Sadako the girl, which is the ring girl, and then maybe even the mom. Um, Sadako, Honestly, Sadako is the, the daughter, and then the mom is Shizuko, which might I would be not... cool. Go ahead. I would not be surprised if the source material was completely different from, from the film. So, because we, we only have the two movies that are exactly the same, I don't think that reinforces that the written story is going to be the same. So, there might there's probably going to be some evil spirit and there's probably going to be some murdering, but I don't know if it happens the same way it does in the film. So, I wouldn't rely on that. Maybe the sure. dad doesn't die in the books. Maybe he's still alive. But it looks like they did make Spiral uh, in 1998 as well when they released Ringu. Wasn't that Ringu 2? Uh, well, so on our our handsome male actor's resume, Hiroku uh, Sanada, he has Ringu and Spiral side by side in 1998 for what he's worked on. I don't know for sure. It's This is kind of a rabbit hole right now that I'm taking us on. But I'm curious... If Spiral so is a see, separate movie, because I Ringo see two, two spirals, okay, I see two thousand, and I see nineteen ninety eight. Yes, so I'm not sure. So for him, I see he's only in Spiral from nineteen ninety eight. He is in Ringo two in nineteen ninety nine. Oh, dude, it, it, it's Sadako, Sadako. Sorry, not Tomoko, Sadako. Yes, yeah, the same. So. Yeah, it's the same killer. It's the same concept. It's the video thing. A young pathologist seeks answers to the mysterious death of a friend and soon comes into contact with the same cursed videotape that caused the death of a friend's wife and son, which is haunted by the curse of Sadako, a relentless spirit. Yep, so it's definitely a part of it, but I don't understand. Yeah, books are going to answer that question. I guess that's all I can say. Books are going to answer the question because I have no idea how he's still around. We know he dies in Ringu. Uh, so I'm assuming he's gonna. It's gonna be spirit related somehow. In Spiral, I don't know. Or maybe, maybe he never dies in the they book. release the movie and the sequel at the same time. This has never been done before. You're gonna get two movies in the same. Well, 
What? Uh, that's anyways, a, it, I guess they maybe it was the first time it was tried and it was never tried again because of how big of a failure it was. But who knows? Who knows? Someone yeah, out there knows. Tweet people, at us and let us know. I can that's... see a lot of people being confused going to watch that movie and being like, "Huh? Mm-hmm. Who is okay. this guy? What is going on here?" Yeah. Why is this person seeing spirits? Is this mermaid down? Badoomch. Oh man, such a great film. We both love that movie. Anyhow, <laughs> kind of like let's, let's go to unless you have anything else to add. Let's yes, kind of my go favorite quote of the remarks. movie. My favorite quote of the movie. And then I have a couple questions for you to see if you can answer them. So do it. Uh, favorite quote of the movie is my dad's fat. My mom's fat. So I'm fat too. Oh yeah. It's possibly yeah. the most random part of the, the entire story. movie. Oh, <laughs> uh, she's in the why? cabin. She's in B4 cabin. Right. And she can't right, find right, the right. tape. So she opens this cabin composite book this journal this sketchbook this child's book and some and some kid had drawn a picture of his fat mom his fat dad and his fat self and that was the words written next to it and i just i mean i lost it i was like this is hilarious what's going on right now and it never comes back up (laughs) never comes. no i think a kid wrote a haiku i think that's what that was (laughs) i just don't think we realize it was a haiku and the kid to be Oh man, just but it like, was good. Hey, a kid wrote this. I just had to I had to talk about that quote cuz it it definitely made yeah. me laugh pretty hard. Well, I feel the same way all the time, you know. My parents aren't fat, but my parents never had like rock hard abs and like massive biceps and I'm ashamed of that, you know. All right, you ready for my questions just to see if I can get some answers? These are my personal questions that I'm, I'm curious about. Hey man, I'm waiting for them. All Throw right. Them at me. Uh, Ryuji on the bench, right? When he's writing something yeah. down, there's like a girl mm-hmm. in white shoes who walks up to him. Is it a ghost, a spirit? Is it his imagination? Do we know what that is? Honestly, I I know what you're talking about. They're like kind of like the splatter, dirty shoes. Mm-hmm. I think it might be him actually seeing seeing things that are making him uncomfortable, things related to potentially spiral if he's in that maybe it's a prequel i don't know okay my guess maybe was it's tomoko, a sequel but okay i was curious you think tomoko i thought maybe tomoko because that's who the kid kept seeing too but i don't know how well, he would Tomo, know tomoko i'm so confused by tomo and the the video and all that stuff so tomoko I'm, I'm confused is the girl who, who dies who's in the seeing who what tomoko's the friend of yochi the boy who dies at the beginning of the movie. That's the girl who dies in the very beginning. And then she's... Yeah, Yoichi. Yeah, and then he sees her throughout the entire film. But the dad, I'm curious if the dad also sees her. But if he did, I just I don't, don't understand the connection. So I was just curious if they I ever I don't understand it. the shoes either, but I know exactly what you're talking about because he seems very shocked yeah. in the moment. And, and we're just like, what happened? He won't and there's look no, up. it's not explained. Yeah, and then they disappear and we don't know what happened. Okay, well... Uh, so that's a question I have. Uh, question number two. So Tomoko is the girl who dies in the beginning. And I think I wrote right. this question. I might know the answer to it, but just curious. So she is a spirit that can talk to the sun and the others, but is she a vengeful spirit or is she just a spirit? I don't know, man. Like it, it all seems like that's not really. So if that's a, the ghost of someone who was killed by, by Sarako, then I, I have to say, I don't know if that's not Sadako just trying to get her shit out there more and more and utilizing their venues to just terrorize and wreak more vengeance on the world that rejected her. Which leads me to my last question. Is anyone really safe after they cracked the case of what's going on? Because <laughs> if they just have to keep perpetuating the tape over and over again, I mean, eventually you're going to run out of people. Oh, man, I just... It's, I, mean, I guess, less of a question, more of a statement, but scary. Who knows what you can do to prevent yourself from breaking free of the curse. If if the terms of breaking the curse are just making another piece of propaganda to continue its legacy, by that logic, you would, I don't know, can the spirit unbreak or reseal a broken agreement if she is the one who said you're out of the agreement? 
I don't know, spirit man. ever rest easy or be fixed? No longer a vengeful spirit, and now they're released and they're I like, guess they go back, they pass on whatever the next stage of life is for them, right? Are you contractually bound by this spirit? Like after watching this video, is is it you signing a contract that you're going to die in a set amount of time, or is the spirit kind of going like, oh, you watch my movie? For whatever magical rules, that means I get to murder you now. And unless <laughs> I like doing it every seven days, you know, watch the movie. I'll kill you seven days later. I'll put it on my calendar. Uh, if you and someone else watch it at the same time, it's going to be at the same exact time you watched it the first time. So I am very meticulous, very detail oriented. Uh, I'll don't worry about it. Uh, there's some spiritual automation I can do to get it all done at the same time. It's, it really, yeah, it's pretty easy. Who knows? I don't understand how spirit murder magic works and I need someone at a higher authority to explain it to me, but good movie. I give it my thumbs up would watch for fun would watch to watch would watch with someone who's not a horror fan but isn't opposed to them to kind of introduce them into good movies i guess i would agree with all that i don't have any i don't, know, I don't have any gripes with this movie i would definitely I, I want more people to go see this movie than the american version <laughs> that's for yeah sure. yeah the naomi watts version is kind of like a cheap thriller just to be a thriller like the amount of jump scares in that one or that is a jump scare film this one is not so yeah not a not a jump scare guy i'm like yeah it's a jump scare now that i know where it is i'm never gonna watch this movie again and this movie without the jump scares is bad there's not really so, much to it yeah for real anyhow let's kind of talk about uh you no know, what have you been up to man uh, oh man, lots of movies that I've never seen before lately. Um, yeah. I'll just pick one. Okay, so the movie I watched recently that I had never seen before and I found very interesting was Society. Have you heard of that one? Dude, I've seen Society. I told you about Society. Yeah, oh man, it's amazing. I did not like that movie at oh, all. I, I love the idea I told you I did not it. like that movie at yeah. all. Is it the gore in it that, that gets you? It's just gross it is it's, it's super weird gross it's the not end, that it's gross it's just weird the like, end of it is so nasty nice the beauty mark part i could do without that <laughs> kind of made me cringe i don't that know that was that was more cringe worthy than all right look i have a beauty mark now no dude you ate that you can make your own beauty mark with what you guys are doing right now if you I can think, turn into that crap i, I think i was like oh okay this is disgusting the minute that the the hero in the movie has to go through the villain of the movie's rectum all the way up to his head, pops his eyeballs out, crushes okay, his okay. facial structure, pulls it back out through his body. That's when I was like, "Yep, this is." They're pulling this out of their ass at that point. Out their ass, and that's how he wins. That's that's spoilers. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's a very interesting film. The the lady eating the hair and stuff. We could we could do an episode on that later if you want. Really. I mean, we're definitely gonna have to. It was it was worth I, the watch. Oh <laughs> god, I hate that movie so much. We should make uh, ra uh, mimic or raptor come on the show for that one. That would be fun to have them as a guest. I on. will I will suffer through this movie again. I'll force myself to do this if we can make a good episode about it, and I'll tell you exactly why I hate it. <laughs> Perfect. What All have right. you been up to lately, my friend? Uh, so I finished Dark, Soul, Dark Souls 2. Talked about that last episode. Uh, I I don't know. I I really enjoyed it. Now I'm trying to get away from video games. I've been doing a lot more cooking, prep work stuff, you know. Getting my life together. Getting things organized in my head and being mentally kept together. So kind of as a focus, you know. Still working on my, my, my solo project, but it's not, not going to be as cool or as fun as this one. I mean, I, I like your show. Dude, I appreciate that. And yeah, you're going to be in episode two, so there's some spoilers right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, future stuff, future stuff. You're on a bi-weekly cadence, correct? Correct, correct, yeah. yeah. So that'll be out probably in another, what, month, month and a half? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the perfect. Clark cast, C-L-A-R-K-A-S-T. <laughs> it could be out right uh, around the time this episode drops because of how far ahead so we are. <laughs> now that I've plugged for this thing for the second time, which means I, I'm up for... 
not plugging it again for at least a year. So I won't do that. Uh, now we're going to start talking about our stuff, which is Two Guys and Some Horror. That is the name of our show. And you can t- reach out to us on Twitter and Instagram via the number two guys horror pod. That is the number two guys horror pod. Reach out to us. Check us out. Curtis handles our fun Twitter portion where he does a lot of weird live tweet shows with all the cool people. He's He's gotten us involved in the mutant fam. We're, uh, we're just having a lot of fun on Twitter, right, Curtis? Yeah, actually, we... So, at this recording, at the time of recording, it is July 21st, and the other day I posted a... Uh, just what I thought would be a fun little way to get to know kind of all of our, our followers and listeners and whatnot. So I asked them to give us uh, horror movies to tell us where they live in the U.S. And I, I, I wasn't even yeah. thinking that it would gain a lot of traction or really leave the U.S. So I was surprised. I had fun with it. When, when we had 104,963 people look at this thing. Um, I nice. mean, I was, I was just shocked. I, I kept talking to my wife every – like I couldn't even put my phone down because every time I set it down, there'd be five new notifications of people telling us where they're from, and it it was really awesome to see so many people just give us you know ideas of like, well, what movie would I rather want for my state? Because I don't like Florida being Jeepers Creepers. I want it to be Crawl or whatever stuff like that. And it yeah, it gave me an idea. Um, I've talked to yeah. you about it to make kind of an interactive yeah. uh, we don't have way to... of doing it, but. We don't have to share it with them yet. This is something you're you're excited by. You were inspired yes. by our Twitter community, and we really appreciate you guys for for giving Curtis that inspiration. You know, he's he's got you know. I'm glad you I'm glad you have that energy, that creative energy flowing through you. Like now, I want to do this. Yes, so, it feels good. Thank you. Also, you can reach out to us. Uh, yeah, no, I'm and everybody, please reach out to Curtis uh, or me. I'm on, I'm the Instagram guy. I don't do much. I accidentally posted a picture of myself on there that was meant for my personal Instagram. So there's Clark Gaff's 2020 continued. Uh, (laughs) But please uh, reach out to us on email too if you'd like to say, hey, I want you to watch this movie. Done. Uh, We did it with Southbound. We'll keep doing it. It's, you know, uh, the email address is two, that is the actual word, T W O, guys and some horror at gmail.com. And that is, again, two guys and some horror at gmail.com. But otherwise, you know, we love and appreciate you. And thanks for listening to us. And we hope you stay safe. Stay safe, everybody. Later. All right. Let me, maybe pistachios are not a good snack for a podcast maybe i should go with the blackberries instead